Hi everybody and welcome to Cut the Kibble. If you just came across my channel, I'm all about home cooking for your dog, so welcome. And for my followers, my over, I have over like 1400 followers on YouTube and I'm very active on Instagram. Thank you for supporting me. I had a follower on YouTube comment tonight how she's amazed how Bella, how Bella looks at 13 years old. She's beautiful, isn't she? She really is. And, you know, I wanted to do a video. At first I thought I'm gonna do a video on senior dogs, how to keep them young. But actually this video is for all dogs because most of the stuff that I do for her, I've been doing for her for a long time. And at the end of this video, I will tell you what extra stuff I do for her because she is a senior dog. So I think this is my opinion. I'm not a vet. I study canine nutrition, but it's my opinion. There are four factors for a healthy dog. One is food. One is medicine. One is environment. And the last one is water. Yes, water. So let me talk to you about, it. she's getting a little heavy. Um, and I wrote this all down. I have a newsletter, a free newsletter, where I share um, my recipes and I share information. So what I'm putting in this um, video tonight, I'm also going to be putting out in the newsletter. I'll have the link in the comments of the YouTube video so you can subscribe. So, um, yes, I think food is a huge contributor for any dog's health. Look, I'm not here to, to judge you or anything, but I am here to help you. And if you're feeding kibble, I wanna tell you, kibble is it, it's a dead food. It has to go through the a rendering process. And the, the, the meats that they're rendering can be diseased and, and dead meats, okay? It's not good quality meats and it has a ton of carbs. Carbs are very heavy in all kibble and carbs are not good for, for your dog. Your dog is not required to have carbs and carbs turns to sugar and sugar turns to inf inflammation and inflammation is a precursor to diseases such as cancer, such as diabetes. So, I think food is a huge contributor to any dog's health. Now, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at my uh, iPad. And that, the other reason is, I say that kibble is a dead food. Look at the back of the ingredients. It'll list a few ingredients. And then it's gonna have a whole list of synthetic vitamins. Why do you think they have to put synthetic vitamins into the food? Because Everything that they put into the kibble to begin with is just been sucked all the nutrients out of it. This little girl has never had a, a multivitamin in her food ever in her whole 13 years of life. You know, those synthetic vitamins, the majority of them come from China. And even if they didn't come from China, it's synthetic. It's not real. What is that doing to the system, to, your, to the, a body's system? It can't be good. So she has never had vitamins and she always goes to a vet for vet visits, you know, once a year and um, she passes with flying colors. Okay, I forgot to add one thing. I'm going to write it down here. Okay, I hope I don't forget that. So, um, look. <sighs> you got to pick the right food, but you know, it all depends on your budget. Now, let's face it. If you get grass-fed, grass-finished beef, that's the best. I don't do that. I may do it a little bit, you know, if I run over to Aldi's because they have good prices on that, but that's not always in my budget, okay? But yes, grass-fed, grass-finished has a higher omega-3 content and a much, much, much lower omega-6 
six content. And what do I mean by that? The conventional cow that is eating is eating grains and grains are high in omega-6s, which cause inflammation. A grass-fed cow does not eat grains. If it's only grass-fed, that means the last three months of it, it will have grains to fatten it up so the farmer can make more money. That's why you want to have grass-fed, grass-finished, because they only eat grass, okay? And grass does not have omega-6s in it, okay? Omega-6s is mostly from uh, grains, okay? So where am I now? You just gotta do the best you can. Just, just don't do kibble. I'm here to help you cut the kibble. I can do a consult with you. I do many consults and I've turned dogs around to live a longer, healthier life. Okay, and also I only uh, choose to add the right vegetables. I never do potatoes. I never do beans. I don't do any legumes of any sort. You look on that kibble bag, they're gonna have potatoes and they're gonna have beans. But they're gonna have like five different beans. They're gonna have peas. They're gonna have pea protein. They, then they're gonna add lentils in there and uh, they'll throw another bean in there also. Why are they doing that? Because it's cheap. They wanna make money, okay? The, the kibble industry is a huge multi-billion dollar industry. They're not out looking for the goodness and well-being of your dog. They're out to make money. So no potatoes and no beans. I also don't use any rice or any wheat. I don't use rice because it's not a species appropriate diet for a dog. Now, yes, if she has diarrhea, which she, I don't know why she has to look that way. I need to turn this way so maybe you can see it. We're going to do a little shuffle here. Um, uh, if she has diarrhea, which she doesn't, then I would say, you know, give her or your dog um, rice. But rice, you got to be careful where it's sourced from because it could be high in arsenic. Now, rice from California has a low level of arsenic, so that's okay. And I don't do grains of any sort. The grains here in the United States are sprayed with glyphosate, which used to be owned by Monsanto, but now it's owned by Bayer. Glyphosate is a known cancer causing, whatever you wanna call it, pesticide, okay? And people have sued Bayer and have won all right and the, and the, the the most frustrating thing is in europe glyphosate has been banned in all products for the past two years but it's still in our products and you know beans are heavily sprayed uh with glyphosate all produce is because it's a drying agent to quickly get it you know off the fields and into the market so the farmers can make money. Um, let's see where we are. And what else? I have here heavy metals. Are the heavy metals are in the rice, the arsenic. I don't use grains also because it's carbs. And did I say that carbs are not needed in a dog's diet? And it, yeah, it goes into the inflammation and disease. Bella's on a grain-free and dairy-free diet. Um, and let me say something. Don't get sucked into these people if you're on Facebook groups and they're like, oh, we're doing goat's milk. We're doing fermented foods. Don't. Make it simple. And not only make it simple, but let me tell you, goat's milk and fermented foods, it's all the rage now, but I would never do that for my dog because it has histamine in it. And histamine can cause a dog to have itchy skin. It could cause a dog to have sinus issues and to be sluggish. You don't, I just, I'm not a supporter of fermented foods. And I have consulted many people who have gotten sucked into this new wave thing of goat's milk and fermented foods and their dogs are itching like crazy. Make it simple, okay? Make it easy 
but make it right. You need to have things in proportions with the proteins and the vegetables. And I am here to help you. I can do a one-on-one -on -one consult with you. All right, so of course, you always have to add a calcium supplement when you home cook. Um, if you're a raw feeder, and I'm against raw feeding, the, the raw meat will have crushed bone in it, so that acts as the calcium. But if you're gonna switch over and home cook, you have to add a calcium supplement. And I've been using Animal Essentials Seaweed Calcium for the past 13 years. Um, that's what I use and I think it's fantastic. Okay, what else did I wanna tell you? I also choose cancer-fighting foods. I've been doing it all her life just because it's a no-brainer. Why not add it in there? I add shiitake mushrooms. I add um, a mushroom powder that I get from Dr. Harvey's called Solaris. I add garlic. Yes, I add garlic. Garlic is so good for dogs in the right measurement. It's antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral. It's just fantastic. There must be something yummy on me right now. I think also she's sensing I'm talking loud. I'm passionate. And she's like, Mommy, what are you doing? We should be watching TV. Our internet's down. And that's why I'm doing a video at night. I never do videos at night. Okay, and I add blueberries. Blueberries are high in antioxidants. If you get wild blueberries, they're gonna be higher in antioxidants. Or you can get organic. You gotta choose which one you want. I personally would choose the wild over the organic, but do whatever you want. Okay, so like I said, everything I just said, I've been doing to, for Bella all her life. But when she started to become a senior around 10 or 11, I started to do some more things to help her out. And um, the reason I, I'm doing this now, my last dog, Snow, uh, he lived to be 16 years old. We had to help, help him go to the Rainbow Bridge. We got him at the age of three. He came over here from Belgium uh, with his owners. And um, I went, I had a friend who was a vet and she would not accept the vaccines that my other Bijan had. So at three years old, my Bijan at that time had to go through all the um, va vaccines all over again. And I contributed that, that for him to get doggy dementia at age 14. And I'll be damned, I'm gonna do everything in my power that this little girl, where is she? This little girl does not have doggy dementia because it's a horrible disease for humans and it's a horrible disease for dogs. So I'm gonna go around and I'll talk about um, vaccines. The number two thing that I contribute for your dog to live a healthy, long, happy life is medications. By medications, I mean, uh, this is what I did. I stopped heartworm, I had to write it down, at age three. Now look, I'm not telling you to stop heartworm. You need to talk to your vet about it. If you live in a, a state like Mississippi that has a lot of rain and it's humid, yeah, you may want to do heartworm, but I live in Virginia and uh, I don't, you know, I, I watch her, okay? So she doesn't do heartworm. Heartworm meds can be more dangerous than the actual disease. Uh, what I'm saying is, um, yes, that's what I'm actually saying. And the medications to give your dog after the heartworm is not good either. You know, your dog can fight off diseases if they're eating healthy foods because uh, their immune system is in their gut, the microbiome. 80% of a dog's immune system comes from the gut. So what you feed your dog, food is medicine, they can fight off disease. So she has not been on heartworm. She has not been on flea and ticks since uh, probably she was eight years old. And I stopped all vaccines, all vaccines, except for rabies, because that's required in Virginia. I stopped all vaccines at age five. And the reason I did that was uh, she was given leptospirosis 
as a vaccine in a combo without me knowing it. And she went into an anaphylactic attack. And I said, screw these vaccines, all right? I have become a more smart pet parent going through that with her. If she ever gets the leptospirosis vaccine again, she will die. What, what is leptospirosis? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deadly disease. It can be deadly if you don't catch it quick enough. Where uh, if you live in the wildlife, I live in the wildlife here. I have bear, I have deer right at my doorstep. Um, but it, if your dog licks the infected urine from the wildlife or drinks out of puddles that have the affected urine, they can get very, very ill. There's a, so many rats in New York City have leptospirosis. So the, the dogs in New York City need to be careful also, not just up here in the mountains with the bears. But I don't give it to her because I can't now. She, she could die from it. But she's always on a leash. I'm always watching her. I would never have her drink from a puddle. And, you know, she doesn't lick grass. If she does, man, I'm right on her. It's hard for me to be on her, not to chew on an acorn. And they could be poisonous, but I'm on her right away. So I'm, I'm with her like a hawk. I don't let her go outside without a leash. I would never do that. We were outside this morning. There was like a turkey vulture just watching us. If I didn't have her on a leash, that bird would have come down and taken her away. All right. So what other? Um, da, 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 da. So basically, these medications, including um, antibiotics. Look, I'm not. I'm for antibiotics if you need it, okay? But you don't want to abuse it. You want to have probiotics, not antibiotics. You don't want to do all these medications because they make the dog have a weak immune system. If a dog has a weak immune system, it cannot fight off disease. So you wanna give your dog probiotics. I love the company, it's called Adored Beast. Right now I'm giving Bella something called Phytos Flora. You wanna rotate your probiotics to get a variety of the um, good bacteria. All right, so the third thing that I wanted to talk about that will have your dog have a, a long, healthy life is the environment. And you know, that's hard. That's a hard one to do. And um, you know, the, the yards, if you live in a neighborhood and it's all green grass, that green grass is there because the owner probably sprayed chemicals, pesticides on it. And if your dog walks on it and then comes back and licks his feet, he's ingesting those pesticides. And I know dogs that have gotten cancer from specifically that, where the dogs were always running in fields uh, for play, the owner thought, but it was all sprayed with pesticides. Um, there's also toxins in your own home. I just did an Instagram story this morning. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. Hold on a second at Cut the Kibble, because I, I do a lot of uh, stuff in my stories of my day-to-day -day routine, but I have a, a tile kitchen floor. I, I don't put chemicals on it. I haven't put chemicals on a floor, oh my goodness, I, since, I ever, since I got dogs, so it's been 16 years ago, I use a shark steam cleaner and it just disinfects with steam. But it's, it's more than that. You don't want to use um, fragrance in your house. You don't want to use like Lysol spray. It's all bad. You can get better products. There's Branch, Basic. There's other, go to, you can go to Target and they have other, I'm sorry, I can't think of the company right now. Uh, but all these chemicals, the dog is going to breathe it in or the dog's going to lick it and they're going to get sick either way. Breathing it in goes to the lungs, licking it goes right to the stomach, okay? Uh, what else? No air fresheners. Um, actually, there's five things I want to talk about. The, the fourth thing I want to talk about is plastic. You know, what, what is your dog drinking out of and, and eating out of? What are you storing your dog's food in? If it's plastic and it's BPA-free, it still has bad chemicals in it, okay? 
You need to try to do glass containers. And for the dog dish, I, I do ceramic, never plastic. Or if you want, you can do, um, I can't think right now, uh, stainless steel, but it has to be from the US stainless steel, not from a different country. Um, so what's wrong with the plastic? It, it, it's something called forever chemicals, microplastics. It's everywhere. None of us are going to avoid it, but we could try to, to avoid it. But like if you do water from a water bottle or fish oil, which she does fish oil from a plastic bottle, these plastic bottles, are it's chemicals. And those chemicals are leaching into the fish oil, are leaching in to your water bottle, are leaching into the dish that you put your food in, or, or you, the water dish, the dog's going to be drinking chemicals. And these forever chemicals do not leave your body. They, you can go Google it, forever chemicals. This is something, I don't know, relatively new five years ago. It's a huge problem. And the last thing I want to talk about is water. That seems so simple, but um, the number one important ingredient, and she's going to bark now, and I'm so sorry. Uh, the number one, I'm going to have to go get her. One second. So the number one important ingredient for your dog is water. They need a lot of water to flush out their bladder and their kidneys, but it has to be clean water. And I'm not talking about the people in Flint, Michigan. I'm talking about the water all over the United States. It's bad, people. It really is bad. And I'm speaking from experience because my son, who is now 30 years old, when he was 18 months, he got very, very, very ill. Okay, he was hospitalized. And long story short, we found out that he was allergic, not, not intolerant, but he was allergic to the chlorinated tap water uh, with all the chemicals in it. And it's not just from the municipal water. It can be, if you have wells, it could have heavy metals. You need to get your water tested, okay? And you don't want to buy water from a plastic bottle. We just talked about that. And let me tell you, because I used to sell water filters uh, after I found out that my son was allergic. And for you, the human, when you take a shower, a hot shower, and you're breathing in, you're looking at me, you're breathing in the hot fumes, you, know, you think that's so good. You're breathing in all those chemicals. And I wonder why there's lung cancer for people who have never smoked. Just think about that. Okay, so I've said all these things, how to keep your dog living a long, healthy life and preventing your dog from getting cancer. And I wanna say you can do all these things and your dog could still get cancer. Look, I don't think I've ever said this, but my daughter, she's now 24, at age 19, she got cancer. And, uh, you know, I was a mom that always cooked and did the best that I could, I thought, and I don't know how she got it. Uh, the doctor says it just, whatever. I forgot what he said, something about something, the genes or whatever changes in their body, DNA, I have no idea. But uh, she's been cancer-free now for four and a half years, thank God. But um, I just wanna say, I don't want you to think I did this video and you do this, this, and this, and your dog's gonna live a great life and never get cancer because things happen, okay? And we live in a very scary environment with all the toxins and, and all the GMO foods that we're eating. So we need to start ticking it off and figuring out what we can do to help prevent. This has been a long video, but I wanted to share it. And I hope my internet's on because I love watching The Voice. I don't know if you watch it, but that's, I don't really watch TV that much. Anyway, let me know if you want to consult. I love to hear all your comments. And um, that's it from... Paula and Miss Bella, <laughs> who is just an absolute sweetheart, and I love her so much. Okay, take care, everybody.